I have a sin to confess. I could confess a number of sins if I wanted to and maybe we'll do that another time. But right now it's something very specific that I want to tell you. I have sinned as a vlogger. I am Katerina George, Romanian writer in the UK and I will tell you today about my recent trip to Bucharest and to the Black Sea in Romania, specifically to Vama Veche, that I took with my partner Adrian. Also, I will tell you why I haven't recorded one single piece of video on this trip. We have taken a number of photos, yes, and you can find them on my Instagram account, Blend Inside, but no video. Still, I have discovered certain things in Bucharest that I wanted to talk to you about in this vlog. So let's get going. First, let's start with why I haven't recorded any vlogging on this recent trip. The fact that it was quite a short trip hasn't got anything to do with it necessarily, because if you remember my vlogging from Bath, that was again a weekend trip and I managed to do a lot of recording from there. But it had to do more with the type of a trip that we took. We spent three days at the Black Sea, at Vama Veche, with a group of friends, which was more like a retreat for relaxation, for socializing, and completely in our own bubble, forgetting about everything else. Then we went to Bucharest, where we had only two days and a half, and again, we discovered the city in a way that was quite meaningful and really exciting as well. And in the midst of all of this, I preferred to rather process everything that was happening, to filter what I experienced, and next time do proper vlogging when I go back to Bucharest, because yes, I plan to really go back to Bucharest even for a weekend on my own, to do some writing, to meet friends, to get a grip of what Bucharest is right now. And that is what I discovered about Bucharest on this September trip. The city is changing. And I am saying this as somebody who used to live there for five years. I was a journalist there. I was a very culturally active person going to writers' groups, book launches, all sorts of events. And my relation to that city back then was quite different to what I'm starting to develop right my now. My partner Adrian travelled with me to Bucharest for the very first time last year, which was 2018. We recorded then a number of vlogs from there because there was a lot more time, we spent a lot more days in the Romanian capital. His impressions, though, in that trip were, let's say, quite mixed. We arrived very early in the morning and you will find the whole story in my first vlog published from Bucharest last year. And I have to say that he was quite unsure and confused by all the derelict buildings that you can still find around the old historical centre of the city. While though a lot has been built and redone, even since I lived there about nine years ago now. And now that we went back this year, I have to say that the city felt already different, both to Adrian and to myself. And that's quite an amazing thing to happen. What was different about Bucharest this time then? I have to say that the Romanian capital is truly becoming a European touristic destination, a capital for a proper city break rather than some exotic place known mostly for its stray dogs and I don't know what other very intriguing but not necessarily very positive facts. I noticed a number of things that made me think about this, starting with how many tourists we've seen around the city centre lugging their trolley bags around and obviously looking for one destination or another. I also think that Airbnb has grown quite impressively recently. We found the best flat 
whatever that we rented through this website and this application. We stayed in a number of places in the UK using Airbnb. We traveled to Copenhagen by using the same website for finding accommodation. And this flat in the center of Bucharest was the most beautiful, most spacious, and one of the most stylish we've ever stayed in. You might laugh or not, but this flat is one of the reasons why Adrian and I said we got to go back to Bucharest for a longer stay. When you pay about £38 a night for such a beautiful, spacious place to stay with, three balconies overlooking Intercontinental Hotel on one side and even Ceausescu's old palace, the People's House, on the other side, two steps away from all the restaurants and the hype bars around the old historical center. Well, that counts to me as quite a good reason to go back. Other details also all amass to the fact that Bucharest is now established on the touristic map of Europe. During the last year, they have introduced the double-decker buses for city tours, something I have never seen while I lived there and while I visited again during these nine years that I have now been in the UK. They even have electric scooters on the streets, something that we discovered for the first time this year in Malaga. These might seem like small details to you, but, and I will not argue that, I think we all have different perceptions about different things, but to me they just account for the energy and the vibe of the city that is buzzing even more nowadays. Then I also plan for this trip a little bit differently to how I did last year on Adrian's first time in Bucharest. I thought because we only had two days and a half, I'll go and try to discover new places where I hadn't even been before. And that's maybe why, on one hand, we got to see Bucharest through tourist eyes rather than through the eyes of a person who comes back to a city they once loved and loathed at the same time. Yes, that was my previous relation to Bucharest. And hence, in 2018, I just took Adrian to all of the old places that I knew and where I loved to spend time. But again, that means that I might have missed what changed in Bucharest over all of these years now. As I said on our most recent trip, we went and ate at some very nice restaurants, the best of all being Casa Doina, which is open in an old historical building. I will include the link down here for you so you can discover what is so specific about this place. It's very beautiful, atmospheric, elegant, they had live music, the menu was traditional Romanian but maybe with a little bit of contemporary fine dining touches. The wine was really nice and it was Adrian's favorite place of all the ones that we've eaten at on this occasion. Then for lunch on the second day we went and ate at this French bistro on the top level of Hotel Chishmijiu. A quite famous building next to the park with the same name, the old historical Chishmijiu Park in the core of the city. And Hotel Chishmijiu used to be this derelict building in the middle of the Bucharest city center, which has even inspired the pop rock band Fama Veke to write um, an adaptation of Hotel California, but having Hotel Chishmijiu as the place in this song. And I discovered the French Bistro in Hotel Chishmijiu by an Instagram account called Bucharest Desserts, which I also recommend if you go and visit the Romanian capital. Instagram proved a really good source to discover all sorts of quirky places in the city. And before I wrap up this vlog, I want to tell you that I didn't even take my own experience of Bucharest and Adrian's as the complete benchmark for how we see the Romanian capital now because you know if you're in a really good headspace and if you're enjoying everything you might even look at things maybe through pink lenses but I asked our friends with whom we spent time while we were there 
how was their perception of the city nowadays. And at least three people said that, yes, the city seemed to have been changing during the last year to the better. It seems to have fresh energy, it seems to grow, it seems to, to evolve in a really good way. And these three people were, one of them, somebody who lives in Bucharest, and I don't know if they ever lived anywhere else, not that I'm aware of. The second person, a friend of mine, she just came back after living and working for one year in Switzerland, while her husband was still in Bucharest, and now she just returned to the city where she started a new job as an IT specialist. And even she said, yeah, the city feels different. And the third friend was somebody who lived for a, for a few years in Yash, in uh, Moldova, in the northeast of the country. And again, she returned to Bucharest a few months ago. And even for her, the city feels different, feels better, feels like a place with which you could develop a better, more positive relationship. Now, this is my atonement for the scene of not having recorded anything whatsoever this year in Bucharest. And it also comes with a promise. Whether I visit with Adrian or on my own next time, I will bring footage to illustrate at least some of the points I am making in this vlog. Also, I recommend you to go and visit Bucharest yourselves. You can find loads of video footage on YouTube about the city and why it will make a great city break and to which I will also contribute to contribute more next time. I promise! <laughs> Before I wrap up this vlog, I will just remind you to give me thumbs up if you liked it, also to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And until next time then, ciao for now! <laughs>